Hey, Simon Jones here from hitfilm.com. Guladig on the forum asked us a question about how to do something using the software. Uh, he mainly wants to figure out how to create video layers with reflections on a plane. In a 3D comp, that is. So, rather than type out a lengthy text tutorial, I thought I'd just show how to do it in the program. So we're just going to use this random bit of footage here. First off, we want to create a composite shot. Rather than using the video's actual dimensions, we're going to go for double the height. You'll see why in a minute. So here we have the comp with the video sitting nicely in the middle. We're actually going to shift it up to the top. And then we're going to hit Control D, and that duplicates the layer. So as you can see down the timeline, we now have two versions of it. We'll just rename this Reflection Layer, because that's what it is. Now, if we go into Transform, we're going to unlink the scale. This lets us change the X and the Y scale separately, because we want to change this to minus 100, and that flips it upside down. So if we move this down, you can see we now have a copy, but the other way up. It's not looking much like a reflection just yet, so what we're going to do is add a square mask to the reflection layer. So we'll just draw that really quickly on there, uh, invert it, and then just tweak a few of the settings to give it a nice soft edge. Uh, we'll just expand that out. There we go. Uh, we'll also drop down the opacity. So we have something a bit like that. Obviously the look you want to go for is going to be entirely up to you. But this is our base layer that we're going to start with. So we'll actually call this Reflection Comp. We're now going to create a new composite shot. Uh, we'll just go with um, more standard 720p framing. Call this Main Comp. It's always a good idea to name your comps because the more complicated your project gets, the uh, more of a mess you can get in if you don't name things properly. So this way you can keep track of everything that's going on. Very useful if you've got multiple timelines and multiple composite shots and all that kind of stuff. You can really rapidly get out of hand, trust me. Okay, so uh, let's bring in our reflection comp. There we go. Obviously it doesn't fit because the dimensions are different. We'll add a camera, and that'll change everything into 3D. Uh, and we shall change our reflection comp to 3D as well. We can now take our camera and change the angle. Let's just pull it back a bit so we can see what's going on okay so we've got our reflection comp sitting in here rather than using the grid we actually wanted to give it a proper floor though so let's go and create a plane we'll just go for a nice square plane of this lovely green color uh, we'll change that to 3d2 let's move it underneath the reflection plane obviously it's at completely the wrong angle so we'll just drop it down 290 degrees, and there we go, we've got a floor. Uh, it's a little bit small, so we'll just drag out the corner points here until we get something that we want. Okay, there's a problem here, which you can probably see, which is that we can't actually see our reflection. If we go underneath, ah, there it is, yeah. So the plane that we're using as the floor, even, is actually getting in the way of our reflection. You can see if we turn off the floor, we can then see it. So this is the thing with 3D compositing, even though on the timeline the plane is underneath the reflection comp, which in traditional 2D compositing would mean it was behind it, because we're actually working in full 3D here, it's simply getting in the way. What we're going to do is use a little cheat. This is something that Andrew Kramer came up with. Uh, if you haven't watched any of Andrew Kramer's tutorials, I highly recommend you do so. Pretty much all the techniques he's talking about you can do in hit film, so some pretty exciting stuff that he covers. We're going to borrow a technique he used... Uh, but using grade layers in HitFilm. Grade layers you normally use to grade all the layers that are underneath it. So for example, if we just grab a random effect, we'll go for blur, stick it on here, and you can see that the whole shot has been blurred. So that's blurring our reflection comp and our plane. That's not what we're actually gonna use it for today, so we'll take off that blur. The thing about grade layers is they flatten everything underneath them. So if you're using 3D layers, they'll actually flatten all of them down into a 2D rendered section. If you put them between 3D layers, that means that they actually exist in separate 3D spaces. So to show you what I'm talking about, let's put it between the reflection comp and the plane. All of a sudden you can see the reflection. That's because the plane is being rendered and then the grade separates these two so the reflection comp is rendered completely separately and ends up being in front. But it still exists in this 3D area that we can move around. Let's just turn off the floor plane so we can see what's going on. There we go, we've got our reflection. Of course, it's kind of hard to tell with this abstract green plane, so let's give it a little bit of texture. We'll just use our cloud effect. Obviously, you can bring in an image to create whatever kind of floor you want to do. 
Uh, we'll just drop the speed down to zero so those clouds aren't doing anything. You can see we can scrub through the video works and as we move around we now have a nice reflection. Now what uh, Gula Dig wanted to do was have several videos all kind of lined up. So now that we've got our comp sorted, that's really easy. Again, we'll just duplicate it with Control D and then you can move it around, do whatever you want and the reflection just kind of works. There we go. Got two layers now, both reflecting just as you'd expect them to. And obviously you can have as many video layers as you want. Before we finish, let's just jump back into this reflection comp. Obviously, you can, as you can see, this is a green screen shot. So let's do what you're meant to do with green screen shots and take away the green screen. Uh, we'll add it to the top, jump in here, turn on the matte view, let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Uh, we'll pop this up, drop that out, just tweak it a little, a little bit there. Uh, obviously, we've got all this stuff around the edge that wasn't on the green screen, so we'll draw a quick mask around the guy here and then um, we'll actually put a separate mask on the top just to get rid of that little bit uh, that one we shall change to subtract uh, if we turn off here you can see we've got our guy nicely keyed just copy that stick it on the one below as well and then we also want to take these two masks attach them to this uh, we'll actually put that mask after it because this is our little mask that creates the nice reflection and we'll change this to subtract as well. So there we go you can see that we now have these two keyed objects working nicely. We're actually going to take our top guy and move him down slightly because as you can see because we've now removed the green screen it's not quite lining up with his reflection. You can kind of set this up however you want we'll just go with that. If we go back into our main comp you can see that we've now got our guy Nicely keyed out, working on here with his reflection. Obviously he's still a 2D layer, so you can't pull the camera around too far. But you can do some interesting things. So, you know, if we put the camera down here, and then let's uh, just add some keyframes. Jump forwards, push in a little bit. Maybe uh, tilt the camera up. And then we have a nice little camera move, moving in on the guy with the reflection all doing exactly what you expect. You can imagine if you actually had uh, an image here in a background and composited it in nicely into a scene, you could do some really interesting virtual camera moves within a kind of virtual set. Um, so yeah, there's a few techniques and hopefully you learned a few bits and pieces with how you can start combining layers in HitFilm. There's lots more tutorials still to come and we'll be teaching you everything we know. And I imagine you guys will be teaching us a few things as well. Thanks for watching.